Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 5. And if a soul, you got to remember in the Old Testament, that soul was not separated from the flesh. And that flesh was not circ circumcised from the soul as it is today the new believer in Christ. Listen, the flesh for a Christian sins, but it's not attached to the soul. And the soul that is saved and is a child of God, that flesh can sin, but that's not going to separate you from God. And hear the voice of swearing. Now, as Americans, we think of swearing every four-lettered word. But not only is it cussing, but I swear to tell the whole truth. Oh, Lord God, if you get me out of this foxhole, I'll do anything. Love, honor, obey, to death do its part. That's swearing. Making an oath to God. Which uh, Solomon tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, it better just keep your mouth shut. And that's what we're running here in Moses in the law. It's more to keep your mouth quiet. Just pray to God and say, God, can you just please get me out of this? And nothing attached to it. And a witness, whether he has seen or known of it. So how can you see a voice of swearing? Raise the hand. Sign your name to a document that, you know, I promise to pay this amount to its pay for of it. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. So swearing, making an oath. If you don't do it, it's iniquity. It is sin. If you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and you get on that stand and you lie, you're guilty. Thou shalt not bear a fault. You know why they don't want the Ten Commandments in the courtroom? It would make you guilty. And the biggest ones that will make you guilty is the frauding lawyers that want you to lie on that stand. As they have pre-rehearsed you the days before that court trial. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing. Whether it be a carcass, that's a dead body of an unclean beast. And we'll get to that beast later. And a carcass of an unclean cattle. Cattle's clean. But if it's dead. And a carcass of an unclean creepy thing, bugs. If it be hidden from him, you have no idea. It has not been a revelation to you. He also shall bear un he shall also be unclean and guilty. You didn't know you did it. You're guilty. What happens if you've been given food that died improperly and you're eating it? Unclean. Or if he touched the uncleanness of man, whether the uncleanness it be that a man shall be defiled with all. This would be the leprosy, the running issue, blood, uh, the, the poop. You come across that uncleanness. This would defile doctors. This, according to the law, we'll get to later. If you sit in a doctor's chair as someone who has bleeding or has an issue, you're guilty of being unclean. 
You sit in, in a hospital bed that somebody's been there already, bleeding. And we'll get to those laws after, but you're unclean. If I would all it be hid from him, you don't know who sat in that chair in the waiting room before you. When he knoweth of it, when it comes to revelation, when it comes by preaching, when you have been taught, when you have read the word of God and you come to the knowledge, the things that we read, verses 1, 2, and 3, let's say a guy has no reading of knowledge of the Bible, he hasn't been to synagogue, he's never been to church, and somebody sits down with the Bible and says, what you're doing is a sin. I never knew that. I had no idea. Saved or lost. There are people who have received Christ as their Savior. They go through the Bible. They, go, they hear a preacher. They hear a cassette tape. And they get something preached to them. Then they realize, oh, wait a minute. I've done that. I didn't know there was nothing wrong with that. 1 John 1, 9. Thou shalt confess thy, uh, confess thy sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And we live in a day day and age in the world today not just America in the world that whatever is evil is is good and proclaim as wonderful it's so great to have a beer time and party with our beer and smoke our cigarette it's just wonderful and you can open up the Bible and you find out oh God's against that that's against the world and it shall be when he shall be guilty. Guilty. There's that word again. And one of these things. Anything that we just mentioned. He shall confess. Well look at that. James 5.16. Romans 10.9. And 1 John 1.9. And 4.15. Confession. You have been made known of your sins. Somebody has came to you and opened up a Bible and showed that you're a sinner. And they are witnessing to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reaction you are to have by God is to confess. There's nothing in here about say this prayer. Confess before God. You're guilty. That he has sinned in that thing. You're to name those sins. You're to go to God when you first get saved and God... Uh, I'm just guilty. And then as the Lord shows you in your Christian walk that this thing you're, it is a sin, and then you name that thing. You name it before God in 1 John 1, 9. And as you learn more and more, and he shall bring his trespass offering. Trespass is when you cross that line you're not supposed to cross. When you go somewhere where you're not supposed to go. It's the injury which sin does. We talked about last night. We talked about the sin offering. You go to Calvary. You get your sins washed by the Lamb of God. All right, I'm a Christian. I don't need to be saved again. I don't need to be born again, born again, born again, born again, and saved again, and saved again, and saved again, baptized over and baptized over. I don't need that. I've been to Calvary. I'm saved. What do I do as a Christian now? I trespass the Lord. I've gone where I'm not supposed to go as a Christian. And my offering, what we're going to read in Leviticus, my offering is 1 John 1, 9. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not to get saved again. I'm already saved. I'm already born again. I'm already a child of God. But I'm still guilty. Instead of going back to Calvary and getting re-saved, which is a violation of the scriptures, I just go up to God in the throne room in the most holy place and God, I'm sorry. And mean it. And repent of it. And Lord, you know I'm battling this thing. You know this thing is hard in my life to give up. And Lord, I, I, I bring the blood of Jesus Christ. And God says, what sins are you talking about? You don't go back and get resaved. You don't go back in chapter 4 of Leviticus and go back to Calvary for salvation. You go back to Calvary and say, man, I'm having a problem with this. So trespass offering. It's what is due to God's rights in every human being 
is being meant here. And read Isaiah 51 verse, I mean, Psalms 51 verse 4, and what we're talking about. Unto the Lord for his sin. Now, that's not the Lord's sin, that's your sin. Now, notice his sin. It's not looking at people in the church and say, oh, well, look at their sin. You're not to worry about their trespass. You're to worry about your trespass. So, here we go. A female from the flock. Here's a female offering. A flock, not human. A lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering. What you have. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. You got to bring animal sacrifice because they cannot shed their own blood. And these animals are a representation of God in the flesh coming. We talked about that, uh, the, uh, the female. We saw that in Isaiah 53. We saw that in Acts chapter uh, 10. Hey, with the Ethiopian eunuch, Phil preaching. One place says it's a female. Next place it says a male. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, shall make an atonement for him cleansing concerning his sin. Now, this is where the Roman Catholic Church brings the priest in. You go in this booth and you confess your sins. I've done that. You're not relieved of them. And you got to ask yourself a question, all right? You got a Catholic friend, right? Catholic family, you really love them. That priest makes atonement for your sin. Oh, yeah, they do. No say that. All right, so where's the lamb or the goat? Well, what are you talking about? Run to Leviticus chapter 5 and chapter 4 say, well, in order for that priest to make an atonement for you that you just said your priest does, where's the lamb or the goat? And they say, well, Jesus, well, uh, wait a minute. It says kid of the goats. And you, you can do that properly because the Catholic Church puts you back under the law. The incense being, being burned in the church and paying for candles and all that kind of mess. If he be not able to bring a lamb. Okay, now we're under the Old Testament law. Under the church, I can bring the lamb because that lamb is the lamb of God. Mary had a little lamb. His fleece was white as snow. It's Jesus Christ. The Mary, the mother of Jesus and Joseph, when they went to the temple, they didn't bring a lamb. They bought turtle doves, I believe it was, or pigeons. But the problem was she held the lamb in her hands. That baby she held is the lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now these animals is a particular study you can get into because each one symbolizes Jesus Christ. But there's only one animal in the eyes of God today, and that's the Lamb of God. She shall bring trespass offering. If he's unable to bring a lamb, he shall bring for his trespass, which he has committed. You've done it. You're guilty. Two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Unto the Lord, one for a sin offering. So you've sinned. And the other for a burnt offering. The fire, the blood, the animals. But see, somebody in error will go by. Oh, every time I sin, I got I got to bring this animal. In Hebrews, Jesus Christ offered herself once as the high priest, and that ends the priestly work of Leviticus four and the Leviticus five and the law. There is no more priest. You say, well, you said in Revelation, the Christians are priests. And our offer of, to God is prayer. And the blood of Jesus Christ for what was in chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 3. If the priest that's anointed do sin, I've sinned. I have not stopped sinning. As a priest of God, I come to God. I bring the blood of the Lamb of God, which took away my sin. That's approved of God. 
There's no more animal sacrifices. You can't find a Jew bringing these animals. That's done. Signed, sealed, delivered. And even the Catholic Church don't even bring animals. They bring cash, check, or money order. And if you don't believe that, go to a widow's house who is in the Catholic Church, who's had somebody died, her husband or whoever, and then watch the priest try to sell her indulgences and in candles and the, the price to get her family member out of hell. Purgatory. And even Jesus mentions that when he's dealing with the Pharisees. It's sold under the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything that we're learning about in the law now is for that Jew to say when Jesus comes, that's him. And this would be the same thing that Paul would be doing in the synagogue throughout all the Jewish people. I want to show you the sin offering. See that sin offering? That's exactly Jesus Christ. You see this trespass offering? That's exactly what we do. But we see Jesus. One offering made to God, Hebrews. And your priests are sinners. Our priest sat down once for all at the right hand of the Father. And he shall bring them unto the priest, who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first. So first John 1 9, you come to God, God, I've sinned. I'm saved, I'm your son. I've, it's it's like, you know, your your child comes and say, Mom, you told me not to touch the cookies, and I did. I ate one. I'm so, I know you told me. Uh, let's, let's, get, let's get it done right now. I stole a cookie. That's what you do. So shall, uh, he shall bring it to the priest who shall offer that which is the sin offering first and wring off his head from his neck. Oh, that sounds vile. But shall not divide it asunder. He shall sprinkle the blood Sprinkle the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, the brazen altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. This is a sin offering. I'm wrong. I'm guilty. I've gone against the word of God. And he shall offer the second for a burnt offering. What do you want me to do to, to undo what I've done? You see, we sin against God, and we go to God and say, God, I have committed this sin. Again, let's take the cookie. I stole the cookie, Mom. I've confessed it. What do I do now? Okay, in the eyes of God, that sin is forgiven, forgotten, First John 1. But we're supposed to, as human beings, as Christians, we're supposed to make reconciliation. We're supposed to make it right. Let's say, okay, as a Christian, let's say I went to somebody and I lied. Lord God, you know, I, I knew I should have told the truth. I knew what the tr truth was, but I said that lie no matter what. Okay, I'm saved. It's washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. God has forgotten it. Now what do I have to do next as far as the human view? You see, the Ten Commandments is God and your neighbor. The next thing you got to do is you got to go to that person you've done wrong and say, listen, you know what? What I told you, I lied. Mom, you want me to get you another cookie? And then that makes God look at you and say, you know what? Not only is he sorry, but he wants to get it right. He wants a good testimony. Now you got what James says. You got faith and works. You can put your blood, you can put your sins under the blood, and God will forgive them. Amen. Glory to God. And then when you make that one more step against the flesh and make it right, the trespass offering. Now you're saying something about your Christian law. And let's take that lie again. Let's say you lie. You know, it's going to take your flesh to be humble to walk up to that person and say, hey, you know, I lied. And you know, next time you deal with somebody like that, and you're going to want to lie, your flesh is going to remember what you did to that last guy. And you're going to, I don't want to do that again. 
Because I know what he, I know what the Holy Spirit's gonna do to this character called me. He's gonna confess it to God. God's gonna get it right, and then that idiot is gonna turn around and go to the person that he lied to, and he's gonna make me confess I lied. That's how you stop a liar. Take your flesh and go to the person you lied to and say, "Hey, listen, I'm a Christian. I have not have done that, but I lied to you." Talk about a humbling experience. Talk about getting right with God by works, not salvation. Salvation was chapter 4. Calvary. Now I've trespassed against somebody. Not only have I trespassed against God, but I have trespassed against a person. i got to make it right. And then you build character. And people will look at you and your religion and say, wow, you know, that guy, he does wrong. But I'll tell you something. I've never seen anybody do. He has made his wrong right. Well, we had that in America. That would bring a revival. And he shall offer the second for a burnt offering, according to the, the manner. And the priest shall make atonement for him for his sin, which he has sinned. So see, you've sinned, and you've sinned, and you bring that to God, and you bring that to whoever you uh, trespass against, and it, the sin, shall be forgiven him. Talk about God double forgiving you. You put it under the blood, and then you get it right with the person you sinned against. And Jesus gave that in Matthew. You got a problem against a brother in the church, you go to that person and say, Hey, you know, you and I need to sit down and talk. <laughs> he says, If you get it right between him and you, you gained a brother, you gained somebody. And then you get that Lord's Prayer where God says, The Father won't forgive your trespasses. Unless you forgive those that trespass against you. Notice how that's read. We're looking at the same thing we're now. The Lord's Prayer. Forgive the trespasses as people forgive your trespasses. Your trespass. Now let's look at your trespass. You go to the person and you confess to that person what you've done wrong. And Peter says, well, how often do, if my brother, you know, offend me, how often do I have to forgive him? Seven times. Jesus says 70 times seven. And with this trespass offering, the person you go to, they're not obligated, but a free will is they should forgive you and respect you. Now, they're all going, I got one man right now who's done to me wrong twice. And I've confessed to him trespassing that if I've done anything wrong, and that guy still holds the attitude against me. Well, I've done what I'm supposed to. I've gone to God with a possibility of sin, and I've gone to the person to make it right. It's very humbling to have to go to somebody and say, hey, look what I did. I ask for your forgiveness. But if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now watch what God is doing here. Bring a lamb, bring a goat. You can't bring a lamb, you can't bring a goat. Get a pigeon, get turtle dove. If you can't even afford that. Now God is... Regardless of the sin, God wants you to be able to take trespass and bring something to make it right. If you got a child in that cookie again, and he goes out in the yard and finds the most beautiful flower he can find, and brings it to mom and says, Mom, I, 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 I took the cookie I'm not supposed to. Will you please take this flower? I love you, Mom. Man, that's going to break a mother's heart. It's going to be, uh, it's, that's more than what a cookie. That, that came from you. That kid may not be able to afford a cookie. But he brought what he could to say, I'm guilty and I'm sorry. Now, isn't God so wonderful? That he, he that sinned shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereof. It is a sin offering. 
So no oil, no frankincense, no incense. Bring the flour. Then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take a handful of it. This is like the meat offering, remember? That meat offering, he takes a handful. And burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him. Jesus Christ makes atonement for us. For him as touching his sin, that he has sinned in one of these. And we talked about earlier in the chapter. And it shall be forgiven him. And the remnant shall be the priest as his meat offering. So the priest in the Old Testament walk away with the meat offering given. As a church age saint that you have trespassed against something, they walk away with something that they did not start with. Whether it be the truth, whether it be something you can give them. And you walk away as a sinner is washed in the blood and you try to make it right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now God is the author, and Moses is the writer. Inspiration. God said it, Moses wrote it down. Men wrote the Bible. Say amen, hallelujah. Shakespeare wrote stories, but God never spoke to his ear. God never spoke to his heart. Math logicians wrote, wrote a math textbook, but God didn't tell them that. Here, God is speaking to Moses, whether by ear or heart, I don't know. But the inspiration of the Holy Spirit says, Moses, here we go. And he's dictating. If a soul commit a trespass, still in the trespass, and sin through ignorance, you... you the Bible in the Old Testament allows no sin that you know you're going to do. Well, aren't you glad you're under grace? Because don't you sin when you want to sin? You realize, for myself, and I, this is uh, there's no degrees of sin, but you realize under the uh, Old Testament, for every red light I get, I'm going to hell. I know it's wrong. I know yelling at that red light and being impatient, the impatience of that light. I know it. Not the Old Testament. Anybody who went to synagogue, anybody who listened to Moses, heard Moses, there's no excuse. Through ignorance, in the holy things. Now what we're looking at here in Leviticus 22, 15, Exodus 28, 38. Anything that has to do with the service of God and the priests and the instruments and the temple. Anything related to God and the tabernacle. Okay. This would be your pastor, your church. Anything in the church you stole something. You destroyed a, a page out of the hymnal. Shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flocks. With thy estimation by shekels of silver. And I don't know if we've done that yet or it's coming up. You were estimated for redemption. You got to bring your money. After the shekel of the sanctuary for a trespass. Or you got to pay. Now, they already paid the amount of money for the work of the service of the temple. And God says, okay, you violated that tabernacle, that temple. You owe more money. You got to make it right. You're, in, you're at your church and you're singing out of the hymnal. And you just watch your son rip the page out of the hymnal. You got to go up to who's ever in charge of the music. And you got to make it right and pay for that book. Unlike hymnals, I walk up, open up and see the page fall out. That didn't happen by accident. Open up a hymnal and you see all kinds of writing in there. Uh, somebody in their family has trespassed. 
and you see something that church is not yours and you steal it, you better bring something back and you have to pay for it. That's what it's saying for today. He shall make amends. Now, isn't that humbling to walk up to the pastor or whoever in the church and say, I've done this wrong against this church. And yet Jesus said, if you have offended your, your brother, you are to go to them. Pastor, song leader, deacon, I have done this wrong against the church. You see what the, you see what the trespass offering is? It's putting the flesh down saying, I have done wrong. I have crossed a line. That is like a, a man who has broken into a house or a store, stole something, and he goes up to a cop, taps it on the shore, and says, you know that robbery there at that store? Yeah. I did it. And I got to pay to the store owner what I stole and then some. And we're going to see later on the law, I think it was if a man stole the sheep, he has to pay five sheep. That's what David had to do with his sons, with Bathsheba. David knew the law. There are people out there who are sinning against their church, and they have not made amends. They have not gotten it right. And it's in the Bible you are too, in the Old Testament, of all places. Make amends for the harm that he has done in the holy thing. And add the fifth part there, there too. When the body of Christ is damaged done by one, it is done to all. And we're also talking about, as far as the church, we're talking about the, when you have wronged a church member, saved or lost, go back to Jesus, go to that person, make it right. And give it unto the priest. Again, we're in Old Testament. Church age, give it to the pastor. Give it to the person that you've done wrong. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. Again, we don't bring the ram. We bring it to Jesus. But how and what do you do to make it right? That's the wrong you have. There are many people out there. Oh, I put it in the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's it. Well, I'm done. No, you're not done. You still offended somebody. It's like this. Well, we're giving this away free. No, it's not free. It costs somebody else to get that free thing for you. Somebody's out money. Somebody's out time. And if a soul sin. And commit any one of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord. Though he wist it not. He had no idea. It's past tense. Yet is he guilty. He shall bear his iniquity. Can you imagine how many people. Who look at internet porn and magazine porn or a barn bar porn and will stand before God and their heart is told them that's adultery. Pharaoh and Abimelech knew in their heart, even though there's no law, ever been a law, that adultery was wrong when they had Sarai or Sarah. They knew in their heart. A man who will look at porn on his computer and not want his wife or his parents to see it and try to hide it. You are already admitting your wrong. And you will stand before judgment saved or lost by God. And it'd be like, well, I didn't know it was wrong. And the next one, why'd you hide it? Why don't you call your spouse or your children or your parents and hey everybody let's gather around the screen and watch this or this magazine? 
And what Satan is doing to the world and to America, he's making it these sins, he's making it it's normal, common, everyday thing. You don't need to worry. He's trying to wipe out the guilt and the conscience of sin. So what do you mean? What do you mean that's wrong? It's not what I was taught. Yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. Ooh. He shall bring a ram without blemish out of the so you got to bring that offering with the estimation for the trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make atonement for him, Jesus Christ our priest, concerning his ignorance, wherein he has erred, and wist it not, and it shall be forgiven him. It's a trespass offering. He has certainly trespassed against the Lord. And when you have done someone else wrong, you have done it against God. We sin against God. And yet we also sin against other people. And I got something to say, and I don't think many of you that hear this are going to do it. Or will ever do it. You wake up in the middle of the night, or you got some time, you're completely alone, and there's no one around you. I do this often, so I can, I can say it. I do it often. Lack of sleep, I get. I'm telling you right now, you, you say to God, say, God, uh, I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood. I, I am not perfectly right. I am your son. The Bible says, as my father, you're to chasing me. You're to tell me when I do wrong. And father, I'm asking you right now. Is there any sin in, in my life right now affecting our fellowship as father and son? And man would be scared against that. Because I'll tell you right now what God will answer me. Impatience for me. And then other things. And James says when we ask, we're not to ask staggering. We're not to ask, you know, okay, I got the answer. And I'm not going to do it like they did with Jeremiah. Well, Jeremiah answers, should we go to Egypt or should we stay here? And God says, tell them to stay here. And then they packed up. Jeremiah moved them to Egypt, went against the word of God. Now, when you say something like that, say, God, what is offending you in my life? Never mind, everybody's so offended. Why don't we ask God what we are offending God with? And sit down and shut up or kneel down and shut up or lie there and shut up and wait for God to say. And when God's done, put it under the blood. Get it right and say, Lord, thank you for being a wonderful father. Tell me where I'm done. What parent would not have a child and a child comes to the, comes to the parent and say, what am I doing wrong? First of all, I think you have to pick the parent off the floor. Any child to say that. And then you explain to the child, well, this is what you're doing wrong. And then you watch that child and try to make it right and maybe struggle. Wouldn't that make you a happy parent? Wouldn't that make God happy? Say, Father, what have I done wrong? And he sees, and you know, we try to take those steps and we, boom, we hit the ground. Well, he tried. Pick them back up and, you know, and maybe hopefully we'll start walking. Some sins God's going to leave for our lifetime to humble us. Uh, you know, one flea will tell a dog, hey, I'm a dog. One sin in our life will tell us, hey, we're a sinner. But as a child speaking to God about a trespass and he shows us where we are wrong and you work on that, you do to get it right before God. And anybody you have done wrong, you get it right with them. Now you have grown from wherever you are standing in Christ. You've taken a step closer to Paul the age. You know, we've been to Calvary. That does not stop us from sinning. Now we have trespasses against the Lord. We cross that line as Christians. We all do. 